Those words changed my life for good. Immerse me in your word today. Because your word is pure. Your word is the truth. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to. I want to give us a background before I start. First Corinthians chapter ten, verse four. First Corinthians chapter ten, verse four. Let me begin to read from verse 3. See? And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. The spiritual rock that followed them can be found in Exodus chapter 17, verse 6. And Numbers chapter 20, verse 11. Numbers chapter 20, verse 11. And Exodus chapter 17, verse 6. Then the crowning glory is in Matthew chapter 21, verse 42 and 40 to 44. Matthew, let me take it again. Exodus 17, 6. Numbers 20, 11. And Matthew 21, 42 and 44. See, and they did drink, all of them. So today we are going to drink from that spiritual drink in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. That rock is who? Is who? Christ. So please join me to sing this song. That rock that never fails let me hide in you let me hide in you in you there is power that rock that never fails let me hide in you let me hide in you in you there is power let's take it in another way that rock that never fails, let me hide in you. Let me hide in you. In you there is victory. That rock that never fails, let me hide in you. Let me hide in you. In you there is victory. Let's again that rock that never fails. Let me hide in you. Let me hide in you. In you there is healing. Praise the Lord. As you believe these things, it will be so to you in the mighty name of Jesus. In John chapter 6, verse 35. Jesus Christ called himself. He said, I am the bread of life. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's what he said, that I am the bread of life. Today, our prayer is that the bread of life will fill us to the overflow. Will feed us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory and honor. Blessed be your holy name, O God. My Father and my God. You say in John chapter 6, verse 35, that you are the bread of life. That you have come from heaven to fill us. That if we take of this bread, we will not be hungry again. So that we hunger for your word. Come and teach us yourself. Circumcise our hearts, O oh God. Make it a fitter ground even to receive your word this morning. And in, turn, in return, O oh God, bless us abundantly. Father, let us 
truly know that we have been with Jesus. Blessed be to your name, O God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. I thank the people that took the search, the scriptures, and um, the summary. In fact, they, they did my work. Praise the Lord. Amen. They just did what I want to do. But if I didn't come out here today, you people will go home and say, ah, they didn't even preach the gospel today. That's why I am here. Praise God. And I know that by the special grace of God, God will bless us abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. Our topic this morning is living and laboring for God's glory. Living and laboring for God's glory. We are going to deal with it in three parts. Number one, living for Christ before men for God's glory. Living for Christ before men for God's glory. Number two, laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Number three, likeness, likeness to Christ's model of glorifying God. Likeness to Christ's model of glorifying God. I will want to do the Bible reading. I will go to Matthew chapter 5. I will read from verse 1 to 16 so that we can get the story of what we are saying. Like the GS, we say that he said that he wants to tell us a story. Praise the Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter 5. I will read from. But the, our emphasis will be on verse 16. Our emphasis will be on verse 16. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mount. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and did what? And are you with your Bible? If you're not with your Bible, you can look at the projection. Praise the Lord. I am with my phone and also with my Bible. Praise God. Amen. Say, and taught them. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Say, he taught them. This teaching is a very powerful teaching. It is about the longest teaching that you can find in the Bible. It went across chapter 5, chapter 6, to chapter 7. And when you read your Bible, you will see that all those words, majority of them are in red. And when you see that, you know that it is the words that are directly from the mouth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. It can be called a message. Or as one of us that spoke earlier this morning said, the Sermon on the Mount. Or you can also call it the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. The meaning of Beatitudes is just simply blessing. So when you go there, you see eightfold blessing. But when you read it, you will, you will not know that it's blessing. But it is. Because it's said about now and there, the year after. Praise the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God, of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, 
for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are, the, are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. And if the salt have lost his savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Then this is where we are going. He said, let your light so shine. Who is he talking to? He's talking to whom? He's talking to me. Praise the Lord. He's not talking to you. You don't have any business with it. Praise God. Amen. He's just talking to me. He said, I am the light of the world. Say that to yourself. Say, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. So I will shine before men. So that men will see my good works. And glorify who? And glorify who? My father which is in heaven. It's not to glorify you. It is to glorify God. Because you're what? You are what? Please talk to me. The light of the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. What is this message telling us? It's telling us that God reveals revealed the Father and His grace towards us. He made us to understand that we are kingdom children. We are kingdom children not by accident. But he knows us one after the other. He knows us by name. The one who says that I have inscribed your name where? In the palm of my hand. When I read that, I begin to wonder how large can the palm of God be to have each and every one of our names written on his palm. And I don't know how many of us who have gone a day without looking at his palm. Praise the Lord. I don't, it is impossible. So God is always focused on us. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 to 7. He said, before I created, before I have already known what you will be, I have ordained you to be priest unto me. That's what the Bible says. And the same thing in Romans chapter 29, verse 30 to 31. Romans 8, 29 to 31. Our side the scripture teacher went through this. You say we have, in fact, let us read it. Romans chapter 8. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image. So God wants us to conform to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. That is why he wants us to be like him, to do like him. All the characters in him, like we studied in our study scriptures today, the fruit of the Spirit. When you, when, you, when you read that place very, very well, you see that it is the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruits, because it's only one tree that bears it. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he wants us individually to fulfill our purpose because he came and he fulfilled his own purpose. His own purpose that he came was to reconcile us back to God, to die for our sins, to be crucified. According to Romans chapter 5 verse 8, See, God commended his love towards us in that while we are yet in sin, what happened? Christ died for each and every one of us. For he admonished us to fulfill purpose wherever we find ourselves today. That is the purpose of beaming the gospel light to a dying world. That's number one. Number two. Because of the privilege that he gave to us, he wants us to reveal the manifold blessings of that was revealed in our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, we must allow our light to shine to a very high degree because we are light. You cannot, no matter how, according to John chapter 1, when you read down, you see, darkness cannot comprehend light. Darkness cannot swallow light. If you shut all these windows, shut the door, and there is total light here, immediately you strike a match there will be illumination. So that is what God wants us to be. No matter the darkness out there, once they see you, they will say, yes. I want to be like this fellow. That reminds me of the story of, the, of Ruth and Naomi in the book of Ruth. When Ruth cited Naomi. Say, there is something that this woman is carrying. I don't want to miss it. Uh, the other fellow went back and that was the end of her. Nobody heard about her again. Upper. The other one was Ruth. And Ruth followed. He said, no, I will go with you. I have seen what is You are carrying light. I want to be a part of that light. The question now is, that can people see you and say, I want to worship in the church? Look at what Ruth said. Ruth said that where you die, I will, where you worship, your God will be my God. Whenever I read that, I have good people. See, can someone see me and say something like that about me? Can they see you and say, truly, you are the light? the world. But Ruth discovered that in Naomi. I said, I am not going back. I have put my hand on the plow. There is no looking back. That light, I want you to transfer that light to me. Our light must therefore shine with inexhaustible oil of grace, love, and of the Holy Spirit light must shine. Like the light of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even though they were slaves in a foreign land, they went there and their light shining. Joseph, in the land of Egypt, he went there, his light. The question now is that, does your light shine in your home. Let us start there because they say that charity begins uh, at home. Does it shine there? What is your relationship? What is the relationship between you and your husband? Husband and wife. Wife and husband. The relationship between you and your children. The 
the relationship between you and members of the church. Will they see you and say, this is a career of light? Whenever, in America, like some people would say, you, you, don't, you will not appreciate the value of light. It is only when you go to Nigeria, that's when you appreciate it. Praise the Lord. When, whenever light comes, there is what? There is joy. Praise the Lord. There is noise all about. But here, a lot of things we take for granted. Maybe some of us that have not been to Africa will take you one day there. Praise God. Amen. So like we said, our message is in threefold. Number one, I'll go to number one. I've already mentioned those threefold. Point one, living for Christ before men, for God's glory. Say our emphasis will be on Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 15, 16. Say, let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. Not before, not only in the house, but even outside. Even in your place of work. It's just because of time, I would have had a lot of illustrations to give to you. Using myself as a point of contact. I have, I have a witness here. Your place of, do they know you? Do, would, they, would they come and say, yes, truly, this fellow is carrying the light of Jesus Christ? Can somebody have a testimony about you regarding that? Remember what God did to Job? He said, I... I you, you, you are light. He said, in, of all the children in the East, there is no one that is like Job. Say, I am giving, I am God, I am giving testimony about this man. So now can men give testimony about you, about your life, the way you have been living, in your speech, in your dressing, in your, in your manner of communication, In your conduct, are you only light in the day? Or are you only light in the night? Or are you only light in the afternoon? You are light all the time. There is no holiday as far as your lighting of the world is concerned. Your light shows your good works. Your good works. What are your good works? The Bible says in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verse 38 that how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing what? Doing good. When you do those good works, the purpose is not to attract people to yourself. It's to attract people to God. Because they know that God has the power to transform that if they also will come to him, his transforming power can change them for his own glory. I remember the story that was told in Second Kings chapter 5, where the Bible records that Naaman, the Bible says that Naaman, he was a leper, but he couldn't help him, he couldn't heal himself. See, the king so much loved him, a general in the Syrian army, the king so much loved him. He was, 
He was a friend to the king, but he couldn't. It was only a little girl who was carrying light, who carried light. A girl in captivity. A maiden. Captivity. And say, I, I cannot go to my master to talk to him. He's a big man, like a Nigeria will say. He's a general in the army. I can't speak with him, but I know who I can go through to talk to him. Went to her mistress and said, Ma, if only my master will go. Because there is a place where there is light and there are prophets there. They went to tell Naaman he didn't go. The, all the rivers in this place are they not better than the ones in Israel? But when he now obeyed, he also became a beneficiary of that light. Praise the Lord. So when you now show your light, people will become beneficiaries. They will not know. Because there are some of them from forth. They will not even know that we are in darkness. Because it, we are used to darkness. When you, are, when you are used to darkness, by the time light comes, it will blind you the way it blinded Saul. Praise the Lord. It made the darkness, the light of God on his way to Damascus. And the light did what? Blindfolded him. But the light of God will not blindfold any of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we are children of light and we are called the light. A true Christian cannot live secretive life. Very true Christian. Cannot live. Then, then question, how must we now live? We should live a good, pure, and influential life. Not negatively, but positively, based on the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So that when people see you, even your conduct. <laughs> we went to a store somewhere in this. So a man approached me. Say, excuse me, sir. I looked, said, are you a pastor? I said, why do you ask? He said, because of the way you go, you move. I've been watching you and your wife. <laughs> Praise God. I said, please, I don't know the way I move and go. He said, but you will not know it. But I was standing, she is a witness, standing afar, I, I saw you. Then I approached you. Praise the Lord. When they see you, the way, your manner of conduct and your manner of conversation will give out what you stand for. It is a Christian life that is impactful by way of good and sound behavior before men, for all men, everybody. Sound behavior. I remember when I was my colleagues when I was in Nigeria. They were cracking joke one day. All of them. We are colleagues in the office. And I came, I, I forgot, and I told my wife this. I said, I, can do, I, can't, I couldn't even remember what I said. The next moment, they said, they look like this. Can you crack that type of joke? I said, I didn't know what I said. I thought I was trying to fellowship with you people. I said, please, I'm sorry. See, they are watching you. You don't crack the type of joke they crack. They crack. No. You are not, you are not patterned after them. You are different. We'll see it in this study. 
different altogether. We are, there are ways that kingdom children are expected to behave. If you don't behave like those, the kingdom children, then you are a vagabond. You are a prodigal. Either prodigal son or prodigal daughter. But I normally hear of prodigal sons. Praise God. Amen. The Christian life that must be lived before all men to make unbelievers to come to the saving grace of God. You leave out your non-conformity. Non-conformity, no. You say this, you take a stand. And maybe some people will say that if you don't stand for something, you will do what? You will fall for anything. If you don't stand for something, you must stand. You must stand for something. Or you fall. How do you fall? You will be blown away by every wind of what? Every wind of doctrine. Every time when they say there is a miracle here, <laughs> you, you run to that place. You are the miracle. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because you are the light eh, of the world. You are the miracle. Non-conformity to sin and the world. Because if the Bible says that if you say love not the world, if the love of the world is in you, you are not part of the kingdom. You love what people do. You, ad you admire them. You see, anything that has to do with sin, that you should do what? Run away. From what? All, uh, anything that appears like a evil. Don't appear, not even, not even evil. Once it appears like one, you're wrong. The Bible says that you flee. And I understand that fleeing is different from running. When you flee, you forget your coat. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you flee, even you, you will not know where your running shoe is. Praise the Lord. Amen. You should be aware of the godly principles on which we stand. The godly principles. Do everything in moderation. I, our moderation must be known by all men. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. When we get one, we read. Point number two. Laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Why do we represent Christ before men? Because the Bible calls us ambassadors of uh, Christ. Please, I want you to, when you get home, you, you check out the definition of someone who is an ambassador. We are the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. So being the ambassador of Jesus Christ, we should reflect, like they said, in our side, the scriptures, the fruits of the Spirit. Those nine fruits, that is what described Jesus Christ. That is... He, those are his characteristics. As light, we do not hide or seclude or isolate ourselves. We can only be useful as light among men. If unbelievers cannot see our light shining among them, when you come in there, there is always a change. Because you are carrying grace of God. 
You are the embodiment of grace. Grace personified. Once you come in, into something, they will say, like we read, that a peacemaker has come. The one that loves without any qualification. Like we were rightly taught. All those nice spirits, they are all embedded in what? In love. I, brethren, I, I'm telling you that anyone you don't love, you don't respect. But we admonish to love everyone. And agape love, that is love without a conditionality is not what is in there for me. I've had a lot of people. It is even a national anthem here in the United States. Love you. I don't say that. Whenever you finish talking with somebody on the phone, love you. When you look at the person's face, no emotion. Praise the Lord. No emotion. I say, what kind of love is this one? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Ask my wife, I don't I don't say even when I finish talking to her, I don't say I don't tell her I love you. Praise God. <laughs> she she knows how I how I tell her that I love her. By my by my you are in the spirit. L love is active word. Actions, the things you do. Praise the Lord. Amen. If unbelievers cannot see our light shining in their darkness, then it is not useful. We beam the light of Christ and the gospel of grace that burns with the oil of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that so they can be attracted to him. I remember when I was in Nigeria, I was working. I was working with some, you know, we are growing up. But they came and told me, he said, look, I, I want to fashion my marriage like your own. Because in the office that, you know, you are making a little money that time. Praise God. You know, and uh, you just came out of school and uh, you are, you know, Women will be hovering all, all over you. Praise God. He will say, uh -uh. Hey, if it's that one, he's married. And yet he had 500 girlfriends. Praise God. Hey, I don't want my marriage to be like that. Praise God. So is your light affecting others? Remember that we are saved by grace. We are God's own workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Like John Wesley. John Wesley. John Wesley was a British evangelist. In fact, the movement that he started was called Methodism. And that movement founded the Methodist Church. This is what he said. Say, do all the good you can. By all the means you can. In all the ways you can. In all the places you can. To all the people you can. As long as you can. Let me borrow the word for our GS. Can I hear an amen for that? Amen. Praise the Lord. I say, can I get an amen for that? Amen. Let me read it again. Maybe you didn't understand me. I'll, I'm going to read it slowly. See? Do all the good you can. By all the means you can. In all the ways you can. 
in all the places you can, to all the people you can, as long as you can. I thought somebody would say a better amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You remember the story of the good Samaritan? Good Samaritan. The priest came. He, he said he, he was late going to church. So, what are you going to church to go and do? When you have seen good that you would do. The Levite came. And it was the Samaritan. And the interesting thing about it is that the Samaritans don't have any relationship with the Jews. No relationship. But the people that were wearing big groups, they came and looked the other way. But this Samaritan came, cleaned him up, Jesus Christ asked them a question. Say, so who's then? Who then is this man's neighbor? Who then is his brother? I will leave you to answer that question on your own. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Christ imparted his nature in us for the purpose of good works before men. God has also given us the scriptures so that the scriptures can punish us unto all good works. Our lives must also show patterns of good work. Patterns. The pattern of good work. Say this, ah, I know that that is. I know that the person that will come to clean this, this church is so and so. I know that the fellow that will clean the restroom is so so and so. You have shown a pattern of good works. They have known you for that. Brethren, just be aware that we have a cloud of uh, witnesses. Like I said in my earlier speech, people are watching you, what you say, what you do, where you go. What you drink, what you wear your disposition. They are watching. The worst thing that can happen to anyone that calls himself or herself a Christian is that they will say, and you say you are a Christian. So what do we do? We have to be examining ourselves on a regular basis. The Bible says, examine yourself to determine whether you are still what? This is one examination you have set for yourself and you will pass. Praise the Lord. Nobody is going to pass it for you. It's you that will set the examination and say, am I walking according to the dictates of the Bible? Am I walking in the spirit? Is that what God said I should do? We must be aware that other people are watching us. They are watching our behavior, our language. The Bible says that evil communication corrupts good manner. Evil. You cannot tell me, you know, that uh, I'm in the midst of these people, you know, because uh, when they when they see you. In the midst of certain people that you are not supposed to be in the midst, you you will say I'm, I'm 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 just there. They are my friends. They are my old friends. If you are Second Corinthians chapter five verse seven, say all things have passed away, and all things have become a new. Old friends, 
If you still keep your old friends, then there, there is no light in you. Praise the Lord. You still keep your old behavior. There is no light of God in you. And your old behavior of always, you know, when you, anytime you come, it's always something that you're going to talk about the other fellow. The Bible says in James chapter 3, when you go, you read it. Say, breathe your tongue. Speak less. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 28. Say, even a fool, even a fool, when he keeps quiet, what happens? People will think that he is a wise person. Praise the Lord. You will see people who will be screaming and screaming. They will forget them and say, hey, Mama, what, what do you say about this? Let me give you a secret. That's what I do when I go to a meeting. I keep quiet. Praise God. People will be giving the ideas, giving the ideas. They will call me. I will summarize the ideas. They say, be our chairman. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Because they have given me all the ideas they, they came with. And they will quietly pick me up and say, you. What, what have you said? I say, okay, yes. I will not even refer to them. I will just give a summation of everything they are saying. Said, any place that we are, we must show that pattern of good work. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good work. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned. Sound speech that cannot be condemned by anybody, even unbelievers. They will not have evil report against you. Titus chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. When we get home, we read. It's Titus chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Why do we do this? Because God has promised us an everlasting covenant. Point number three. Likeness to Christ's model and glorifying God. We do good so that men may see them and glorify God. Jesus Christ did everything to glorify the Father in heaven. He never detached from the one that sent him, like we read in John chapter 15. When you go, you read down. And John chapter 17, verse 4. He was not diverted from his earthly purpose. He even rejected to be crowned as a king even on earth here. He focused his attention on the purpose he came to fulfill on earth. That is his suffering and death for our sin and to reconcile us back to God. So whatever we are called to do, let's do it with all our strength, might, and knowledge. We should not procrastinates. There is no time. The king's business requires what? Urgency. It requires haste. We must continually assess ourselves to avoid living a wasted life. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 and Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. We must realize that we are not ordinary like we said before. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Please let us bring that. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Because we are closing. What did he say? First, he says, Come on, and I want us to read it together. First Peter. Are we all there? Can we read it together? I want to go. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people 
that ye should show forth the praises of him. Verse 10. Praise the Lord. So we have royalty in us. So we must not allow our personal challenges to prevent our light from shining. For when our light shines for others to see, many will be converted to the Lord. They will glorify God for being transformed by the light of the gospel. Our lives will glorify God as they also shine forth the light of God's grace, love, holiness, and power before men. Paul said, what, what can separate me? What can separate me from the love of God? Let's read. Then we'll close. Romans chapter 8. Chapter 35, verse 35. Let us read it together. I want to go. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Let's go. Let's go. Praise the Lord. I will leave you to answer that question. What can separate you? No matter what you're passing through and all that, just know that you are a special person. You are kingdom children. And kingdom children are not supposed to be careless in their talk, in whatever thing they do, in their dress, in the way and the way they, they where they visit. And even the friends they make. Father, we thank you magnify and glorify your name thank you because by yourself you called us the light of the world we should go and show forth the praises of him that has called us out from darkness into light father the grace to show forth this light father grant unto us even today in the mighty name of jesus my lord and my god we thank you for this Wonderful lesson that we have had today. This lesson will not stand against us even on that last day. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. I want you to say a believing amen. amen.